Hey, good evening, everyone. This meeting of the Milburn Short Hills Business Organization is called to order. Today's Thursday, May 18th, 2023. Uh, can we start with our uh, sunshine compliance statement, Tracy? Notice of the time, date, location, and agenda of this meeting to the extent known was provided at least 48 hours prior to the commencement of this meeting in the following manner, pursuant to the provisions of NJSA 10436, the Open Public Meetings Act. Notice was posted in Town Hall and the Township's website by notification to newspapers on December 27th, 2022 of the schedule for 2023 and by providing notice to the Township Clerk. Thank you, Tracy. Please stand for the salute to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. A roll call, please. Okay. Alexa Clark is an excused absence. Carlo Caparuba. Present. Tracy katz here. Jesse Mullman. Here. Michael Parlovecchio. Here. Annette Romano. Here. Ashley Schultz. I believe is on Zoom. No, I'm trying. Okay, <laughs> Ashley Schultz. Can you hear us now? There he is. Here. <laughs> Hi, Ashley. Richard Wasserman. He's on his way. Okay. Stephen Weiner. Here. Jackie Lieberberg. Here. Thanks, Tracy. The purpose of a special improvement district is to promote, grow, and support local businesses, property owners, residents, and visitors. Milburn Township City Ordinance designates a new district management corporation whose mission is to encourage the economic, cultural, and social vitality of Milburn Township through increased marketing and visibility, improved and renewed infrastructure and local business development and engagement. Approval of minutes. Tracy, do we have any minutes for approval? Yeah, we have minutes from April 20th. Okay, anybody, uh, is there anyone who cannot vote on that? You were not here? Annette and yeah, Ashley. Here. Okay, so Annette and Ashley, if you could just refuse from that. Uh, can we have a, uh, a motion to approve the minutes from April 20th? Motion. Second. Second. Okay. Uh, can we have a roll call, Tracy? Uh, and for the record, Richard Wasserman is here. Good afternoon. <laughs> okay. Hello. Okay. Uh, Carlo Caparuba. Approved. Tracy Katz will be. Yes. Michael Parlovecchio. Yes. Annette Romano, oh, you were absent. So remind me, it's a abstain or a no vote? Yeah, I, I, my request would be that it would be abstain. That's abstain. how the member wants to vote. Okay. Um, Ashley Schultz, who you were also absent. Yeah, abstain. Abstain. This one, Ryan recommends. Okay, and Stephen Weiner. Uh, yes. Okay. Great. Thanks, Tracy. Thanks. Okay, we're going to... Uh, Soldier on, go into uh, committee reports. We have uh, bylaws, governance, and finance. We're starting with our treasurer's report through April 30th. Stephen. Okay, thank you. Uh, just in your materials, we have the budget report uh, for, the, for this month. Uh, just to bring some highlights to you, the balance as of April 30 in our bank was $53,718.32. Um, actual balance as of May 11th, though, was $141,098. So we're, we're getting revenues um, deposited in. You'll, you'll notice on the special assessment on the budget report, it reflected a, we've received 45% um, of the amount due. Um, however, there is an updated report as of today. Uh, we've actually gotten 89.2% of revenue uh, deposited. So that's terrific. It'll be reflected on next month's um, report. Um, also to bring to your attention, uh, you might notice the executive director salary. That's the portion that the town contributes. Uh, as, of, as of the date of printing, uh, it was 26% paid. 
However, I understand that the budget was approved by the township, so we should be getting 100% of that of the rain, of the full amount due very soon. Uh, lastly, up toward the bottom on expenses, I just want to bring to your attention that um, of our total amount of revenue versus what we've collected and spent so far, we're at, we've spent about 32% of, of everything that we plan. I'm just reading the bottom line under total expenses. So, so we're on That's target. It. We are on target. Thanks, Stephen. Uh, Mr. Director, we have an audit status. Yes, uh, we are scheduled to begin our audit of our 2022 calendar and we, we run a calendar year uh, for our financials, as you know. Uh, so 2022 is our next audit uh, that will start on Tuesday, the 23rd. Uh, should be fairly quick to do everything. And I'm hoping that we will have our full report by our June meeting. Perfect, thank you. And Steve, that's our new auditor auditing firm. That, we just that is correct. That. Yeah, Will Cotts. Uh, Will Cotts and Company. Yep. Perfect. Okay, we have an attorney report from Mr. Cooper. Certainly. Uh, so we were last together April 20th. Uh, I give you a report and anticipated having at that time a result of the motion that the Bear Properties uh, plaintiffs have filed to put the um, SID assessment in escrow. That was originally scheduled for the 14th. It was adjourned uh, to the 28th. So, um, uh, as you believe, you may have received a report um, on April 28th. The court heard that motion. Uh, that motion was denied. Uh, so, that is the bear properties uh, plaintiffs' uh, request that the SID assessment be placed in escrow was was denied. Uh, I believe in your packet is the township's uh, brief in opposition to that motion. I think it is a good summary uh, of the issues and the reasons why. Uh, that should be denied. Um, and um, I don't have the copy of the transcript of that hearing. I understand there's some additional reasons for the denial that are placed on the record. Uh, and I'll, I'll look into getting a copy of that from town attorney. Great. Anybody have any questions? I would just, um, if we have any detailed questions that would require a closed session, just keep that in mind. But if you have any questions about the face of the uh, the order that's been provided or any other not so deep questions, feel free to ask them. And if not, we will move along. Thanks, Ryan. My pleasure. Next uh, to Amanda, marketing, branding, and placemaking. Okay. Um, Tracy, if I miss anything, just let me know. Can you hear me? Hello? Yes. Now we can. All right, so we had a marketing committee, was a, I think it was last week, um, and a really great meeting. Uh, everybody was there, Rena, Lex, and Tracy. Um, there's four main things we talked about, and I, I want to skip around a little bit. One of them is a promotional postcard about the SID. We had put together one for founding day to hand out to people about us and uh, upcoming programming. But um, the committee really feels we need something more robust and that's a little more visual and not as businessy, but more friendly. Um, so we're gonna work on that this summer. And this <coughs> card is really gonna be developed so we can use it for multiple purposes, whether it's tabling at an event or it's um, something like neighbors and newcomers, that kind of thing. So that will be coming. Um, going back to public engagement efforts, um, one of the things that the committee wants to do is for us to um, start going to more events and tabling. We have kind of our usual ones that we do, founding day, lunar new year, things like that, um, but to get out to other ones as well. Uh, we talked about the postcard and then uh, the Metropolitan is going to be opening soon. That's a big audience, especially for Upper Milburn Ave. So we're gonna be working on a, uh, a piece, possibly a packet that will promote uh, Explore, welcome people to the community, but also give businesses the opportunity to put in, um, whether it's uh, coupons or other types of things, um, so we can get right in front of those people. So we really wanna take advantage of that. Uh, and the other one is the neighbors and newcomers now called neighbors. Uh, for people that um, are new to town. They give them all a little kind of gift with some information. So we're gonna be able to put something in there as well. So we're really trying to find these different opportunities to get to the residents. Amanda, can I, can I interrupt for yeah. one second and mm -hmm. ask a question? Um, 
as for the metropolitan, the new metropolitan and the newcomers. Mm -hmm. Is there some type of map or uh, schematic so we could show these people where the stores are, where the different restaurants, shops are, so, something that out, something that they can hold? I mean, yeah. obviously they can go to the website. I can I can design that as part of our contribution to it. I'm, I'm sorry, because especially if you're coming out of the new residence, you just moved in. It's just all. And, and you say, you know, where do I go to get a bagel? Where do I go to right. whatever else? Go to the cleaners. Post then, office. Yeah, yes, right. mm -hmm. um, is, and you mentioned that might be mail, it'd be a mailing. No, no, this would be something we, that would be physically handed to people. Oh, physically handed, okay. Yeah. Out, out as a packet. Mm -hmm. um, we can also email them as well. But, you know, a lot of places when they, you're leasing something, they usually give you some type of welcome. Um, whether, uh, you know, it's, oh, get a car wash at this place. You, you know, you're familiar with those type of things. So we want to treat it similarly because, um, there's not going to be a lot of opportunities to get right in front of them. Um, but any other thoughts or questions? Yeah. So, so this would be um, for the new uh, rental tenants once they move in, so to speak. This is, you know, uh, great. And then so, it can be replicated with the other developments yes, as exactly. they come on in Milburn. So this is something that could be done, I guess, four more times or as it. Right, because yeah. we'll have the various and new construction on that's that will yeah, be we forthcoming. Can, we right. can just work with the leasing agent, give them right. copies of this, however this ends up looking. Right. Um, and then they'll have it. And so it doesn't require much work from us other than producing it and dropping it off. Now, yeah. should we give that to our merchants to hand that also? Um, or it depends on how much quantity you want to hand out. I think we should concentrate on the new residents and then okay. see where we're at. Um because this will be an expense, I have to put that together. Um, but as Steve said, we can customize that for any residents, um, whether it be with a customized map, welcome letter, things like that. Yeah. Um, so when a lot of businesses have already asked, what are we doing? Is there some way we can give them something? So we know this is uh, something people want to do. Do we know if Springfield is going to do it? I don't know. Um... That is not that area is not within an improvement district, so right. I don't know if there's anybody necessarily paying attention to it. Right. Um, I'm happy to reach out to my colleague in Springfield and see if um, we can figure out what they're planning to do. But it's on the border, right, with us, and so we might as well utilize it for oh, our own businesses. Right. So and the walking distances, right? It's much closer to walk to, to, to Melbourne than it is to Springfield. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think it's a great opportunity for us, and you know, we can just continue to. To move that along and as you said you know the annie says property when that comes online you know we focus maybe a little bit more on the wyoming district and downtown versus um you know a project where you may want to focus on another neighborhood so we can curate right. that as well and we'll give all the businesses an opportunity to put something in there but we'll be doing a general promotion for the civic business right. thank you at the end of the day yeah everybody who's going to be moving in there is mm -hmm. going to be looking on their phone. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. as long as it's like formatted to your phone yeah. where you can go do that, and maybe there's a link to the businesses, that business website, you're going, there you go. Uh, it, it could really be a helpful, it could really be a helpful tool as far as like each section of town mm -hmm. and each section of town looking to promote. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we've, I've dealt with this throughout my career and that, you know, people have their own um, routines, right? And so if you're leaving the metropolitan and making a left because you work in summit you may never even think of downtown milburn or wyoming right because you never go that way and so part of this is also letting these people know regardless of the development um that there are other districts and you may never pass that district but mm -hmm. just because you don't pass it doesn't mean it shouldn't become potentially part of your shopping experience so um the more that we can get people aware of this large multi-district improvement district and that we are encircled by all these other communities i think it goes a long way to to driving foot traffic and we have to exploit the benefit of all these new residents we get in early we get in early to create buyer behavior Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, you only get one, you know, with this, you get what one shot at doing that. And that would be just fantastic. And I think we should also gauge the, the non-digital, I'm sorry, I think we should also uh, gauge or not the non-digital approach, you know, kind of like what you said, everybody goes to the phone, but you know what, the phone is clogged. You know, there's mm -hmm. so much digital um, information, data coming at people. It's kind of like going back to some printed material mm -hmm. Um, you know, there's definitely, I, I, I see some, uh, I see some traction with printed now. 
It's true. So, so it's good to keep our hand in both. No, and I think we can yeah. do both as well. Have a cut, we can create an area on the website. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have, have they indicated when occupancy might be? Do you know? I know it's a moving target. It's but. a moving target. I, I think probably July, August is, is a good time frame. That's when they had told me originally they thought they'd start having occupancy. Um, so it's it's real estate, you know, <laughs> nothing set in stone, but that's why we're preparing to have this done um, by July, August, so that we're able to hit that timeline. Do we know if they're fully rented yet or? I, I don't know. Okay. Um, and then on to Upper Milburn, Upper Milburn um, Ave. Can you pull it up, Jesse? There's an image of a sign. So um, they're doing um, redoing that parking lot behind um, the uh, area on Upper Milburn Ave, and also doing the signage. There's old chamber signs that are hanging on kind of ornate iron, um, and so what this design is for is to replace those. And um, the marketing committee met want to keep uh, with the look of the other new signs being put in. Um, but to welcome people, we had a lot of different conversations about, you know, are we saying business district? Are we saying shopping? What are we doing? But what, from a SID standpoint, what's representing everybody this business district is. So that's where that came to play. And then our logo is on a piece that is, um, it's a separate piece that is removable. So if we go through an, uh, a change in branding, something else, we have the uh, flexibility there so that the whole sign would not have to be reproduced. So the yellow is for Upper Milburn and then the colors would change in the different districts. Um, but that's, this is the, the newest draft from the, the sign. Yeah, and just as a reminder from last week's meet, uh, last month's meeting, um, the town has asked us to take over the signage program for the lot 14 uh, redevelopment. And so this is one phase. These are just two signs. Uh, this is a small project. Um, I know the, the marketing committee wants to go over some very final details about this, but this can be ordered very, very quickly um, and placed. I have a meeting on Tuesday with the sign vendor to go over final design for all of the directional signs, just making sure that if we put a sign in the ground that you'll be able to see it, there won't be a tree in front of it, that the arrows are pointing the right way, you know, just one of those very careful things. Um, and that can happen prior to the repaving as well. Um, and then the final stage of this will be any signage that is within the lot itself. Um, we don't right now, I believe, know where the EV charging stations will be um, and some of the other pedestrian access that's still with the engineering department. Once that's finalized, we'll be able to then finish that part of the signage process. So that's a, it's a three-stage signage process. We're basically done with stage one and stage two uh, is probably about 75 percent there. Okay. Um, the the final thing that I have here under um, the marketing committee is a branded table setup. So we have our tablecloth. We usually have some type of giveaway, um, but it, you know, it was brought up that we really need something that um, has more uh, more materials. You know, uh, the um, the retractable signs, things like that, um, so that it's consistent with our branding, it's meeting the different needs of the people walking by, it's engaging. So that's another project we're gonna work on over the summer is what does that ideal branded table pop-up look like? And then um, developing the materials and getting that together, hopefully for the fall, I think Rocktoberfest would probably be a good goal for that. So that was kind of the final topic we worked on in the, our meeting um, last week. Does anyone have any questions? Have we considered a tent, like a pop-up tent, instead of we a, have a table? We, you know, that's branded for for no explore. So we we own two tents, um, but they're not branded. So that that'll be part of that discussion. Is okay. how far do we go? So okay. Um, anybody else? Okay. Um, on to spring plantings. All right. So. Um, so we've been working really diligently to have as much of a consistent look to what um, planters we're in charge of, uh, especially with the Beautification League. We want, we want them to 
be similar. So um, we were able to get the list of plants and everything from the Beautification League. We're working with Birch Hill. They've taken that into consideration and they're gonna be doing the plantings in our uh, currently 27 planters uh, beginning of next week. So you'll see those, those in progress. Uh, one of them is going to be on Upper Milburn Ave, and I'll get back to Upper Milburn Ave um, shortly. And then um, another new thing that came out of Founding Day, I believe Steve had been talking with them, the Milburn Climate Action Group, um, they do native plantings. And so what they're going to do is take nine or ten of our planters and plant uh, their own flowers. Additional planters. Yeah, not the 27. We have, we have more. Um, and they're going to plant them uh, and put them out in Short Hill Station. And what they do is they, they plant them as they grow. They end up removing them in early fall. So then we would be responsible for putting new plants. But this is something we may be able to do with them each year where they do that spring, summer planting. And then we, we move on from there. So it's a nice way to work with another group in the community. And uh, they'll be so, so they're going to be donating their time to plant these. Uh, we're going to be using existing unused planters that are stored at Giro Park mm -hmm. by DPW. Um, and we're going to cover the cost of purchasing um, the plants. Uh, and it's about $120 a piece. So um, a pretty cheap, actually, compared to most planters. So um, hopefully this is an ongoing partnership. It does add 10 more planters to a district where we don't have any. Um, as you know, it's, it's expensive. Um, we, we spend probably the better part of $7,000 um, a year at minimum just on yeah. plants. Um, so to have a partner that's willing to donate time is terrific. So uh, we're excited about that. It's a new wrinkle this year. So we're adding 10 more to our 27. How are the condition of those planters that have been stored? They're actually in really good shape. Um, they're all plastic. Oh, so they okay. age well. Um, they look like they're stucco or whatever. I don't know what the right term is. Um, but they, uh, they, they all hold up very Ceram well. Ceramic. <laughs> they're also very light. That's what I was thinking. I said if they've been stored, maybe they're chipped and cracked. No, no. no not plastic. Yeah, so I mean, it's it's a strange thing. People ask me, like, you know, how does the town get the plants? Oh, well, you know, there's a private vendor that does some of the downtown, um, like all of the, the the traffic circles and triangles and things. TBL has probably 50 or so. We have 27. This other group is now going to work for us for 10 of them. So it's kind of a all hands on deck to get all the planters out. But, you know, if we can hit our goal of end of May, um, we'll be very happy. Did on, the, on all those plants, did we ever get name like put our name on the planters? Did, did we ever they're, find they're in there? Um, they're, they're so we one. have we ordered um custom uh signs that go into the bed. Oh. Um, some of them have been lost, broken, whatever. So we're going to order some more. Mm -hmm. Um, but most of them are still there. So um, sometimes they're hard to see because the plants are coming out, but um, they yeah, we, we I would say. At least 75% of them still have the sign on there. Good. Um, the other thing, once uh, we know exactly how much we're spending on this, if we have additional funds, we want to start working on Upper Milburn Ave. We've already walked it. We know what we want to do with the planters. So that's going to be a focus, if not this fall. Um, that'll be a focus in 2024. Mm -hmm. The other project for uh, Mars Turnpike the, um, I don't know if you've heard of this, the verge, it's the, between the street and the sidewalk, that little spot, we want to clean those up, put in Riverstone. So that's a project we're going to get uh, numbers for and see what we're looking at. Um, and then that most likely would be next year, but we're, you know, we're trying to make an impact on each district. And that would be something that would kind of unify the look, clean it up. Um, so that's, that's on the way. You may also want to get Keep in mind that during the holidays, that all that same strip is something that we also will address, right, with the <laughs> holiday signage or whatever we do. So maybe, maybe in our thinking should be, you know, whatever we put there, you know, is that valuable for our holiday uh, season? Yeah, and, and there's there's going to be additional conversations between myself and Alex McDonald and Annette as our liaison. That there's a lot of curb appeal that needs to be achieved in this town. Um, there are a lot of spaces that just don't look um, to the level that they should for Milburn Short Hills. Those are very, very expensive things to do. Um, and so we love to phase them in. 
Um, but there are things that potentially the municipality, like they've done with signage, if they can allocate funds, we can certainly project manage it. Um, and so Alex has always been receptive to those kinds of things. I think we're probably all in agreement about what needs to get fixed. Morris Turnpike yeah. is a good example. Um, unfortunately, that is you know beyond the SIDS budget. Um, and so you know we can put money towards it, but certainly if we can receive additional funds from the town, it goes to benefit everyone. So those a, are- That's a very big pathway up there. It's a uh, long way. That Morris Avenue, yeah, we, we've walked it before. It's a very, it's a long quarter and it's a, uh, and it really is underutilized in terms of signage, in terms of, especially over the holidays, in terms of, yeah. uh, you know, lighting it up. What are we talking about? So Morris Turnpike from Milburn Ave, all the way up to the Benihana, right. uh, the railroad trestle. That is all within the boundary to sit. But what area are you talking about with lighting and stuff? Well, that, the, the whole area, that area. The whole it, sidewalk? That, that whole area on, uh, on Milburn Avenue. Uh, no, Morris the whole Morris, on Morris Turnpike up to Benihana. Because over the holidays, uh, the township last year gave the city some money to, you know, to spruce it up. Some things in the ground. Right? Yeah, they put snowflakes. Yeah, and that's, that's, that's a bit, that's a long, it's a long it road. is a long road. It's a long road and it's been under it's it's been underappreciated over the years. It's a very, very expensive area to improve curb appeal. And so that that's just the challenge. Maybe we do works with Springfield somehow and like do both sides of the street around the holidays. I don't know. I, I would look I'm gonna I'm I'm going to speak to you yeah. about this. There's a couple of other items, including Upper Milburn, with some uh, potential tree plantings that we'd like to talk about with the town. Um, so, I, I, you know, we're committed to curb appeal. We need to continue to do it. It's a very, very large town. It's a very, very large city, um, you know, just in terms of, of, of geography. And so all these things take time, but, uh, you know, we have the support. So that we just want to let you know kind of what we're thinking. Yeah, I just have one question. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't think about doing sponsors outdoors, uh, some kind of sponsorship, would you? I, or you want to just? I, I'm I'm not suggesting you do, but is that is that what other? Are, in, given your experience, is that what other sit? Do they do that, or or is it just with respect to special events, or? Well, I, Morris Turnpike specifically. No, in general. Oh, in general. I, I would say that it's the kind of thing where the expense is going to outweigh what we would get in, in sponsorships and donations. I'd rather use the smaller donations that we get for events, live music, public art, those kinds of things. I think, I think this is, is something that needs to be a shared responsibility between the municipality and the city um, because these are large capital investments. Um, there's other things that we, you know, we're working on as well. You'll hear probably at our September meeting, um, the town has tasked me with working on removing some of these old air raid sirens that are on the poles. Um, none of them work. Um, and so we're looking at a Bluetooth system that, you know, we could play music out of a central location. And, you know, those are big ticket items that, you know, luckily our BA is very cooperative and works with us and says, this is something I want to get done. You guys figure it out and, and then we'll, we'll work on the finances afterwards. And so um, it's a good relationship, but these are all big things that need to get done over time because, the, the town has aged, just like any other community. And, you know, I think we're on top of it. It's just a matter of getting the bills taken care of. The other thing I wanted to bring up is with holiday lighting and things like that, we're going to be talking over the summer about something that's would work for the town because um, that's another challenge, even on Upper Milburn out because of the poles and the access to electric and things like that. So um, a lot of different people make certain efforts. We want to try and get everybody in the room and say, what are we doing? Um, I mean, a simple thing too is getting the lights up um, before Diwali so people can enjoy those. So there, there could be small changes too that can help, but we'll keep you up to date on what we uh, discuss and, and hopefully can do. Yep. Um, okay. I didn't think that was going to be such a long conversation. But it was a good one. Um, <laughs> right. Well, and I will say... Um, We've been in touch uh, with the people at the Metropolitan and they've given us the, the schematics and the lists of plants and shrubs and trees they are putting on their properties. So when we do do more work on Upper Milburn Ave, we can also coordinate that so that has a consistent look. So we're really trying to make things. Yeah. Are we still happen. getting the benches? I remember at one point. I reached out to them. I'm waiting on a confirmation, but that's what so they had agreed for to. For consistency, that was a great Five point. garbage cans and three benches. 
um, they would they had promised to donate to us so that for our, our street furniture yeah. will match the other side of the street. Yeah. yeah, that's great. That's great. Yeah, fingers crossed it comes through. Yes. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, moving on to public art. Um, Jesse, can you pull up the? I'm just gonna. Okay. So I wanted to just do a couple of features. Uh, this is the uh, must art Earth Day inspired art that is in the art alley. So that's the before, during, and then if you can scroll down. Oh, no, it's still the same. I guess you might have yeah. to open. That's the finished piece. Um, it was really great to work with him. It was a lot of fun being there that day. People were stopping and talking with him. He was letting some um, kids like hold up a spray can and, you know, pretend they were doing it. And so it was, it was just an awesome, awesome day, awesome experience. Um, hope to work with him again. And uh, the next thing down is the uh, kiosk art. So this is an evening one over by Karamia and Fiamma before and after. And Steve and I were both talking about how it's, it's really pretty with the light coming through at night. Um, so that's just one of them. And then uh, this is the one by Dunkin' Donuts to kind of show you how that looks and then a close up of it. So it's Ann Joski's work. And it, I mean, we're, we're very pleased. I, I hope you are as well. Um, the other things we have here. So we were able to purchase the Milburn Strong piece. Uh, this is going to be indoors and we have a few ideas for locations for it. And then this piece over here. Uh, was done on founding day, a community art piece. All different people participated. Um, so that was um, Jesus. Uh, he was the one that came up with that and he's already put protective coating on it so we can put it outside. So we'd like to put it uh, possibly in Wyoming, um, especially because it says Milburn. So I don't think we want to put it in Short Hills. Um, but if anyone has any ideas, you know, please share them with us. Otherwise, we're going to be um, working on locations and owners of buildings to put that up. Um, so, oh, and then. What about in the art alley? No, no room? Temporarily, maybe? We want to put it somewhere outside of downtown. Yeah, okay. we really want to, and I'll talk to you about that. Um, uh, the other things that went up, um, we have the. Milburn at Night Photography Series, which is on uh, the, the center unit of the Futter Building. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's it for those pieces. Coming up, we're gonna be putting the mandalas, Carol uh, Nussbaum, those are gonna go actually on Carlos' property on um, Upper Milburn Ave. We were planning on doing it before he joined the board. <laughs> so it's worked out really well. Um, so that should happen in the next week or two. And it's, they're gonna just be stunning. They, they are so clear and, and colorful. I think it's gonna stop people in their tracks. Uh, we have the Family Moonlight um, mural that's it's printed on a banner that's going up at Short Hill Station. We were just waiting on some paperwork to get approved. It has been, so now I can move forward with the owner and then have it installed. DPW already has it. So we'll let you know when that's up. And then uh, let me just see. I'm going to be uh, designing plaques um, with the information and the year and everything for all of the public art to go. Um, I, I thought the one that's with the all together now is really beautiful. So to try and make them look similar. Um, so they'll be going up next to the pieces of public art that are um, well outdoor and indoor. Um, and then Something we're going to be working on after Girls' Night Out is creating a permanent section on the website for public art on our website. And we'll be able to list the artists, the locations, and also create an art trail. So that's going to be something we work on uh, kind of end of June, um, which I think will be really helpful. It'll be a one-stop shop um, for, for the public art in town. Uh, did you have something you were to say? This is all thanks to a gracious grant from Essex County. <laughs> so thank you all for Essex County government. So. Um, some pending items. So I finally got a response from ShopRite for the mural we wanted mm -hmm. to put. 
up there, they have declined um, because they are undergoing renovations. And so they don't feel this is the right time to work on that project. Uh, so we're, we had some other properties in mind, including the Wyoming um, cleaners, uh, which would also be putting art in another district. So I've, um, I'm starting to reach out to that uh, owner to see if we can do that because we have the money set aside to do that. And um, let me just see, in the fall and in this, and then uh, spring of 2024, depending on the funds we have available, we're gonna be working and concentrating on Upper Milburn Ave and Mars Turnpike for public art. Because we're gonna have some, hopefully in Wyoming, we have plenty in downtown, Short Hill Station's gonna have something. So we wanna make sure we're hitting all the districts um, at that point. Does anyone have any questions? But when we do like an unveiling of some of our public art, are, it, are we just going to do it and then announce it, or do, or do you want to commemorate it with, uh, you know, with you know, ribbon with, cutting? Yeah, with a ribbon cutting or something, <laughs> and invite our local merchants to uh, you know to come over and maybe sponsor some coffee or something. I would love to do something like that. I think this spring, the way things were happening, the timing, we weren't sure, and you know, so it wasn't. Um, really a good opportunity to do something at once. Yeah. I think once we have um, these other pieces put together, then we can have a public art and it, event. And you could just invite the local merchants from that district to say, hey, look what we're doing. Look, look what the city is doing in your, in your district. And it'd be nice to coincide with the launch of the web page. Yeah. yeah. You know, to just do it all as a, you know, we have an art trail now that includes not just the art that we've installed, but all together now, the 9 11 memorial, right. the opportunity, postcard. Great opportunity yeah. for community. Mm -hmm. exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. <clears throat> Can I say just one thing? Yeah. First of all, great array of projects. Just to Carla's point earlier, when we do this art trail, that seems to really lend itself to something on your phone. So just mm -hmm. to make sure we have like a mobile friendly <clears throat> version of that. And especially as we get those pieces in different districts, that really could lead people to go to different districts and maybe even like something for kids you know like a art scavenger hub oh, or something yeah, yeah how about like qr codes yeah you can yeah put them on there i mean we could even have qr codes by the art right people could yes. like right learn more about exactly. it or middlesex county runs a really good um art trail yeah. that has a map qr codes etc I'll, I'll speak to uh somebody there in their their art and uh, rec department and figure out how they did it but i think uh yeah, we certainly want to, and use it as a push, right? right? To say, well, you're here, think about, don't get in your car, right. actually walk down the street. Right. And right. Um, so those, the, yeah, I think if we can definitely do that, it'd be, it's all about, for, you know, creating more foot traffic. Yeah. I mean, this also sounds like another thing that could be a good thing for some of the influencers that you connected with. Right. Like it does seem like yep. a social media friendly type of thing well, to um, promote. Uh, and Sturbia, once we have the remaining items installed, they, they can't wait to do a story on it. So yeah, no, we're just getting started with the marketing of this. I think it's just wanted to get enough up that we can market it. Yeah. Um, and with the QR codes and other things, um, the, I think that's something, yes, we need to do research and talk to other people, but QR codes on a metal sign is something that makes me a little nervous just because of things change. Mm -hmm. um, so I think we'll be able to come up with some solutions that'll work. Um, Cause I, I lived in Philadelphia for a long time and they have a robust mural arts program there. So I also want to contact them and see how they've been transitioning over the years too. Um, anything else for public art? Okay. Next is girls night out. Oh, wait, we skipped. Oh, oh, more skipping. Oh, Hold on. She's an elected official. I'm okay, sorry. So we have now we, we go on to <laughs> events and planning. We have Annette to talk about Memorial Day parade. And then, Amanda, sorry. we have <laughs> So I, you know, Scolding. I think we're. Uh, <laughs> uh, I mean, there's, a, there's an agenda. <laughs> I'm sorry. I think we're, what, it's under two weeks from Memorial Day, right? Two yeah. 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 Less than two weeks. Less than two weeks. So um, the, uh, May 29th, the Memorial Day parade will be stepping off from the high school at um, 11 a.m. I understand we have a banner. Yeah. So hopefully um, we'll get a lot of participation um, from this group and we'll uh, walk down to Whittingham Terrace. There will be a brief program in Taylor Park. Um, ShopRite has donated um, hot dogs and we'll spark up the grill and we'll have some hot dogs. 
Um, and also as part of the committee, um, the township committee also had all these, uh, the flags, the new flags replaced down Milburn Avenue. It's supposed to be on Main Street too. I'm not sure if, if they're there yet or not, but they really look beautiful driving down Milburn Avenue. Um, that's about it. I know we've got some groups coming in from out of town. We've got horses. Um, hopefully the weather will be nice and uh, it'll be a great time. And hopefully I won't be standing there alone with the banner. With the banner. I, hope <laughs> okay. I hope not. I hope not. And we have our, the banner is up across the street from DPW on Essex Street. The banner came out <coughs> really nice. So um, we're honoring Gary Walls this year. So it should be a fun event. Where will our groups like meet for this? We're, I think our next meeting, we're going to be setting up um, the uh, the line. Of, so what what usually what happened what's happened in the past is uh, in the high school driveway, someone will be standing there, or there will be um, you know something on the ground uh, telling you where your group should be standing, and that'll be the order of uh, marching off. So I would say to be there by. Around ten o'clock. Thank you, Annette. Okay, girls' night out. I'm allowed must to go anticipate. Must <laughs> anticipate. <laughs> okay, I have a lot to cover. I'm going to go as fast as possible. I will cue you, Vicky, when we're when we're ready. Okay. Um, so first of all, I want to thank the girls' night out committee. That's Vicky. Um, Jean from SLT My Skin, Kelly and Corinne from Real Style Exchange, uh, Nadej, whom we all know, and I think that's it. It's the five of them, and they have just been awesome, um, putting a lot of time and effort in. We've been meeting weekly on Friday mornings, and everyone's been energetic, and um, so I think the success of this event is, is really a shared one, and um, really, really proud to be working with everybody. Uh, so thank you. <laughs> um, we have sponsors this year. Uh, we've raised five thousand dollars in actual yeah. cash. It's been wonderful. Um, Her MD, which is a new business, they're going to be opening officially in August. Uh, they're on up in Wyoming. Um, they are our signature sponsor, and they're also going to have a pop up. Um, been wonderful to work with them. Uh, Barnabas came back in. They used to support Girls Night Out, so they're back with us again this year. And actually, uh, Julie from Opportunity Project was the one that connected me with them. Uh, so that was really helpful. Uh, Evolve Fitness Studio, Men and Regenerative Institute, um, they came on board as well with paid sponsorships. Moonshine, it's an in-kind sponsorship. They're going to handle all of the snacks uh, for the after party. So that was really wonderful. And then uh, the rest of the uh, sponsors, it's in kind um, as well. Um, okay, so as of this afternoon, we had 132 people pre-registered. So we're doing really well so far. We're gonna have 200 swag bags. Um, we did 150 for here for the holidays. We knew this was gonna be bigger, so we did 200. And um, Business participation, we have 58 businesses that are participating in the event. And that's, and I'll go over highlights, that's whether that's the swag bag, we're having a raffle basket, um, they're doing promotions, they're having a special experience, you name it. So that's been amazing as well. Um, we had, uh, and this was Kelly's idea from Real Style, she did a live registration at Real Style and at Pure Bar A last Saturday. Um, Jean is going to do one at Live Reds this Saturday morning. I'll be at Taste Buddy this Saturday afternoon. So that's a nice way to catch people and make them aware. Uh, we are going to have a photographer this year, and that will help us with our postcard and our other things to have some nice professional photos that we can use on our website. Um, and that's Chris Jorda, a local photographer. Um, so that's really nice to be able to work with him. And he laughed. He said, I'm right above moonshine. So I think we know where he's going to end up at the end of the evening. Um, and then um, marketing, I still have a lot more to do, but you all have one of the posters. So some have already gone up today and they're going to be going up tomorrow and over the weekend throughout the districts. Um, the QR code on there, um, it's, I can't remember at this point if it's going to the website or directly to the registration 
but um, that's that's working. Um, and then we have a banner going up uh, beneath the Memorial Day banner, and that's going to be up either tomorrow or Monday, um, which we think will give us a lot of great visibility. Uh, so very excited about that. And then the swag bags, uh, I just ordered them, but they're going to be kind of similar to this, a little shiny. Um, the committee really liked that idea, so ordered those yesterday. And let me just see. So um, highlights from the event so far. We're having Vicky Q. We're having <laughs> trench coats that different businesses are decorating to represent themselves. So <laughs> this is Shala's. <laughs> This is my trench coat. Wow. Nice. And they're going to be modeled during the event. Oh, wow. so fun. We have 18 businesses doing this. Oh, my God. That's super <laughs> fun. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, we had fun. <laughs> yeah, um, I want to thank you to um, Emily at Green Door Studio. She let us set up in the back and have a nice craft evening to get everyone started. So that was a lot of fun. Um, I'm still working on Steve's <laughs> trench coat. Uh, that'll be evidently. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> um, so yeah, 18 businesses is pretty, pretty amazing. What we're going to do with them is from five to seven that evening, they're all going to have little posts in the downtown. Mm -hmm. um, some of them are going to be handing out roses to people, others are going to be handing out guides for the night. So it's going to be, a, it's going to be great. Um, we are, we so far have 10 businesses that are going to be pop ups. We're setting up a pop-up area by the clock tower where the farmer's market usually is. Uh, the reasoning for the pop-ups is we learned last year that uh, even though it was district-wide, everyone was essentially coming to downtown. So what we wanted to do is give the outer districts an opportunity to have presence in the downtown. Mm -hmm. And that through a pop-up, if they wanted to have a table or something in a business in downtown, some people have said they're willing to host a business. Some said they're interested in being included. So we're working on kind of matching people up at this point. I have a feeling the uh, pop-ups are going to go up because right now we're confirming all the details of everyone's participation. Not everyone knew exactly what they wanted to do when they registered. Um, some experiences to uh, highlight. There's going to be CBD facials. Uh, Artavino is doing a special art class. Um, F45 Fitness is doing a book event. Men and Regenerative is going to have vitamin shots. Um, Restyle is doing a braid and tinsel bar, which will be really fun. The Paper Mill is doing a bourbon tasting. Uh, Baki Barn is going to have a yoga class, and that's just a sampling. We're still collecting the rest of these. So there's really a lot of options for people. And the swag bag, um, we've talked about, that's going well. Um, and then entertainment wise, we're gonna have two bands, a DJ, two kind of roving um, uh, artists, whether I, I'm still getting them, but like a violinist, that kind of thing. Cause we were trying to figure out how to cover downtown and also draw people out to the edges of Main Street, Essex, um, Milburn Ave. Uh, so it's not all completely central. Um, and we're going to have two psychics as well. People love that. And then there's just a ton of promotions that the different um, shops and services are having that people can purchase that night. Um, and then there's the uh, we're have two grand openings for businesses. New Mooney, am I saying it right? Which one? New Mooney Baby, which is going in where Vi Vi Vivinico. Vivinico was. Um, and then T-Boy Chic, which I'm still learning what they're up to, is going in next to Coffee Mill Ro Roasters, right? <laughs> <laughs> Coffee Mill Roasters. <laughs> so that'll be nice to incorporate those. We like to do that anyway to try and have more at an event so we're not doing something every couple weeks. So that'll be a nice welcome for them. And then we're having um, a raffle. So everyone that pre-registers or registers that evening gets entered into a raffle we have a basket that's full of local um products and gift cards that's worth over a thousand dollars we have um a basket um from alpha fit club that's worth over 800 and two tickets from uh, the paper room playhouse and i'm sure a few more things are going to come about we have some nice things for people to win and um, just make sure if I'm missing save some for the event what Giving all the secrets away. You usually tell me. To. <laughs> I, 
anyway, so um, we're going to be constantly updating the website, and then I'm going to be intensely marketing this for the next three weeks. So, um, but the pre-registration numbers are great. We're really happy about that. I think I've covered most of it. Um, does anyone have any questions? I have a question. Yeah. First of all, wow, sounds really awesome. Thank you, Vicki and committee. Um, are we like really encouraging businesses to be open, like stay open that night? Yeah, it, the, the events like, from four to eight Yeah, um, with the after party. So um, I'm doing a lot of communications with the businesses right now. I'm just trying to confirm the things they're doing. Right. And then we'll be reminding them, you know, you should be open. Some people won't if they're offering a class. They're going to have a class at six or class right. at seven and probably close. And I mean, we can't control that. Yeah, I think I'm just thinking even businesses that are not necessarily having a special offer, like hopefully there'll be a lot of people walking around. Right. Oh, yeah. So just encouraging businesses overall, like I'm just using this as an example, uh, Sugar Bear, right? The candy place. Yeah, I don't know where they purchase. So they're already, like, I don't know what time they usually open till, but places mm -hmm. like that, that, or even like Coffee Mill Roasters is a great example. Like they have gelato there. I remember like being in town one night, I'm like, oh, I wish they were open later. Like I would love to have some. Just encouraging businesses overall that there'll be a lot of people in town and would love to have yeah, you open. We can get eight. messaging out to remind them you're going to stay okay. open, stay open late this night. Right. Yeah. And also um, just making them aware of the, there's more people and, in town. Because exactly. I know that's happened with like the Lunar New Year event and stuff. Starbucks is sold out by noon. Yeah. So we just right. want to make sure that's everyone is ready. aware. And if they want mm -hmm. to take advantage of it, they can. Um, right. Also, in part of um, what I'm doing with the pre-registrants, we'll, we're sending them uh, updates. But then also, uh, before the event, where can you park? Where is check-in? All of that. So we just want to make sure this is as easy to get to and navigate as possible for the attendees. And are you like wanting us and others? Like, are there going to be volunteers? Are there going to be so we're having a meeting tomorrow morning. And we're going to put together a list of our volunteer needs, and then we can yeah. start asking um, uh, and model needs as well. So um, we do need some people to sport these coats. So we'll reach out to you once we have that, because then we'll have the timing as well. <laughs> Um, everything that you mentioned was that all free yeah. like are all the the things that the different businesses were doing so some of them are going to be paid and that's what i'm going to send out so um people will initially register and then i'm going to send out an update probably tuesday or wednesday with these are the free ones these are the ones you need to pre-register for these are the ones you have to pay for so that's part of the follow-up we've been doing with the businesses is you know, what is, what's going on. And so like Artavino, their class, um, they need to be registered for, but they're getting it at a discounted rate. Um, so what we're hoping to do is have that all in one central location. Um, I'm hoping to be able to do it with Eventbrite where they can, everyone can go and pick out what they want to do, pay. And then hopefully you know, pay with plastic and people don't carry cash. Or... Right, exactly. Because ideally things will sell out. That, that would be the, the great thing. Um, but like the... Uh, the psychics, like that's cheap stuff. That's $10, $15, $20, depending on what you But it's usually doing. cash. Right, it's right. And cash. we'll let the attendees yeah. know that as well, that right. this is how you can pay. So again, trying to make it easy on them, but not inundate them with information. And do we use the um, paper mill to advertise? Like, do we put these at the paper mill? Um, we, I don't we even will. know if the show's over, current show. Is it over? I think it is over. Yeah, yeah. It's over. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah, no, we will. We're just getting these out. Um, as far as advertising with them, unless we put something in a, a lot play of people field. come through there. Right. It's a good idea for all of them. I mean, we should be using the paper to advertise for everyone. Yeah. yeah. So we they usually include our stuff on their online newsletter, which is great. They right. have, I think, 20,000 right, subscribers. Right. Um, but yeah, definitely some physical posters would make sense. Yeah. And lastly, our, what streets are going to be closed? No, no streets no are going to be closed. We're gonna have someone um, helping with crossing from Essex, Essex is at that corner to um, to Main Street uh, by um, Fiamma, just for safety, because that's gonna be the busiest area. Um, and then we're gonna have signage and everything else throughout the downtown. Any other questions? Did I, miss I have one tactical question. I think yeah. you had mentioned this last time that like the corner of Millburn Avenue Main Street was going to be like the main. 
starting point, like the check-in place? So we're actually, we moved the check okay. the um, check-in and swag bags to the pop-up area. The reason oh, okay. is That's good. the DJ is going to be at the corner of where Gansha is. And we can't be helping people, giving them directions with the music. Got it. Oh, that's good. Okay, so that's, that's why we had to say. Them. Otherwise, we, we would have had only it having it there. I was thinking we should also have it at yeah. the clock tower area. But it sounds like we're instead yeah, having just, it at just moving area. it over there, which mm -hmm. should also help the pop ups. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And yeah. Essex Street. And Essex Street. You know, the hope is that people won't. You know, they'll they'll disperse down Essex and maybe come around. Mm -hmm. and, and part of what they're going to get, just like we did last year, is a map with um you know different things listed on it um so it'll it'll kind of create a trail of where they should go and then it'll list the businesses that are you know openly participating in anything do we normally do it at four to six was it normally done at four to six the time? 48. 48. 48. Um, i mean that's early. that's it's earlier five to nine. It's, it's five to nine. normally because i could just i i'm just imagining like all the traffic and people like walking and stepping into the street mm -hmm. Not realizing that the streets open. Mm -hmm. It's a little late in the game to change the time. Right? Yeah. Um, no. 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 <laughs> but um, that was something we discussed as the committee, and that was the time they felt. Oh no! Me. I'm not arguing the timing. I'm just like, yeah. why is the street open? But there that's another discussion. I guess. There will be a lot of traffic. There will be a lot of traffic. I didn't. I didn't know that that would be a possibility for a street closure. <clears throat> We're going to be able to do that. Do you have a thought on it? I mean, would you? What are you thinking? Closing Maine, closing Milburn. What? What is your? Am I getting your it's yeah. just a thought. Both. I know you can. Mm. You probably can. Maine is too big. This rush hour. The other the other problem is if you close Summer. the street, then you're going to create a, more traffic yeah. in yeah. other areas. Right. Or, I'm on the committee. Can I speak up? Yes, please. So we can hear you. We used to do girls' night out many times. We never. We only closed the street when we did the tents. But I do not advise. We had crossing guards. That's why I spoke to Amanda about that. We can have crossing guards on Milburn Avenue, but I would not close these streets because you're going to have merchants that are not going to be happy. And I'll give you the sponsor, Moonshine. The only reason the way he agreed to sponsorship was you were not closing Main Street. Gotcha. So I think, you know, yes, there's going to be people, people walking around, but if you have the crossing guards, it's doable. There, everyone's not going to be all together. So I think, and we, why we change it to four to eight is because, because four, uh, five to nine, people tend to slack off and it gets too late. So if you do eight, then everyone go to the after hour party. And so I just thought, we all thought it was a better time frame, but I think closing the streets is not a, a wise move at all that's my opinion so the after hour party will be open for any anybody can come so attend get a drink have a snack get a if they want to go right. to the after party at registration and that okay. entitles them to snacks they're on their own for drinks okay um, i believe victor's going to do like a signature cocktail yeah or something yeah like that. I, yes well there's, we're going to give so much yeah can pay for right it. no 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 i'm not <laughs> suggesting that yes but anybody suggesting. yeah but it's a Bar. I mean, you're not going to bring your eight, you know, eight year old. But yeah. you, if you want to go have dinner, you're more than welcome to because yeah. they have a, a section that's that you can eat there. But yes, you'll have a little area. We're having will... an area designated yeah. area. Yeah. Yes. And so the wristbands will just be an easy way for the them to know that you can go over there, head over there. Yeah. I would also think that it will be a banner night for our restaurants. If it's yes. a nice evening yeah. for them to. You know, as you said, somebody participate four to seven. They've gotten, you know, and then they'll pop into Vinny's or Fiamma or La Strada or GM, wherever and, you know, meet their families, hopefully, or their or whoever and grab dinner. Um, so they've all had the opportunity to sign up officially for this. Yeah. Some have, not all of them have, but as far as the outreach of, are you staying open late, that kind of thing, that'll be another reminder um, right. that this crowd's coming and they're coming at dinner time. Sure. Right. Yeah. And you only have one, you only have one crossing guard right now? At this point. Um, I mean, do you think that, do you think that, do you think more is? Yes. Yeah, we can get more. That's, I mean, I mean I'm just scary. asking, I'm not, I don't, I don't know per se. I'm just saying one, you know, one, if it's a, if it's a family night, like it's a great night. I think there should be one on Melbourne Avenue. Avenue. Also. Yeah, yeah, I'm, yeah just, I think, I'm just thinking yeah. maybe we should rethink that. And that's what we did when we yeah, had girls' night out. 
you know, you, you might need a few more. And I, I don't know whether the town would pay or, or we would pay for it, but you know, just 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 for security and for safety. safety. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, that's not a problem. And maybe about relaxing the four to six for parking. What do you think? Is that stretching it? No. Alex <laughs> likes his parking revenue. Okay. <laughs> okay. Can't say we're not still a suburban community. We have an after party that starts at 8 p.m. <laughs> <laughs> not exactly wild. <laughs> we have not become urban, trust me. No. Okay. No. Did you hear that? Okay. Um, anybody else have any questions or thoughts? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I think it's great. Yeah, it's terrific. That's great. It I think is. it's great. I think it's exciting. I think there's a lot going on. I think it's well I, planned. Well planned. You're really touching, uh, you know, all area, all segments of businesses. Everybody has an opportunity to participate. Um, I think it's just hats off we're really happy yeah, yeah. Happy for great weather yeah, yeah. yes we everyone asked for great weather yes uh, i think that that covers my report perfect this time i love those coats thank you amanda yeah. see amanda it was good that we waited we got full bill thank you. <laughs> yeah. all right so now we're going to move on to jackie you're going to tell us about see the sunday overview for this so uh, the Cultural Engagement, Diversity, and Arts Committee will be hosting See the Sunday at Bower Center, Rain or Shine. We have a variety of performances from our Chinese community as well as our Indian community. There'll be um, festive dancing, there'll be music, there'll be live performances. Uh, it's, it's, they've been practicing literally for weeks and weeks. Um, uh, hats off to Steve, who was able to secure a DJ in the 11th hour to make sure that um, all the performances will go off um, in the most professional fashion. There'll be snacks and drinks. Um, so I think it's going to be a really, really nice day. Um, we have, I mean, uh, the, the groups are coming um, from both local, um, the two Indian schools are also local, but with a renowned uh, international following as well as the Chinese groups. So I think it'll be a really, really exciting day at Taylor Park, one to four, rain or shine. Um, please come. It's inside. Jeff. It's the weather's going to be great. Yeah. The so will be good. We'll have, it'll be inside in the big room. We'll have the doors open. We'll, you know, the music will be heard. Uh, outside and then we're, we're, we're hoping that it will, we'll be standing room more than sitting um, to accommodate the crowds. So thank you, thank you. Thank you, Jack. Thank you. Okay, on to business advocacy. First, Jesse, you've got a solid waste ordinance update. Yes, hard to follow a discussion on all this. Yes, literally. So over the last couple of months, the township has communicated along with Explore um, changes that are forthcoming to Chapter 14 of the Milburn Municipal Code, which governs solid waste and recycling, um, at the township committee meeting on Tuesday night. Business Administrator Alex McDonald introduced those changes formally under new business. And on June 6th, those changes will be um, formally considered on first reading by the Township Committee. They cover language changes to the code, which hasn't been updated in a while. Um, but importantly, for the business community, um, all commercial properties will no longer be collected by the Township. There's only um, percentage wise a small number of businesses that are serviced by Giordano Co., which is the township's municipal hauler. The code will be introducing a new section which governs the responsibility of each source, whether it's commercial, institutional, multifamily, residential, or municipal, and who is responsible for picking up that waste. In addition to these changes, um, any business that um, has waste and needs to contract privately will have to provide documentation to the township proving that they are using a private hauler. This is both to prove that they are um, 
contracting out privately, but also for our end, we as a municipality have a responsibility to report our tonnage for recycling annually with the state of New Jersey. So this helps us get grant funds. And so it serves two purposes there. Um, one to prove that they are contracting privately and the, the other to help us meet our obligation to the state to our, report our tonnage accurately. Um, we are in the process of developing a letter which will be sent out to all businesses in the township, both those that are in the SID and those that are not in the SID explaining all these changes. Um, you know, there's some minor changes as well, making sure that any waste has to go in containers as opposed to being, uh, you know, allowed to be in plastic bags on the street, things of that nature. But importantly for the businesses that are no longer to be gonna be collected by Giordano, we will be sending it to every business. So everyone will get a letter with all this information. And importantly, I've worked with um, Steve on developing a matrix, which clearly outlines of all the different properties that are found in the township, what the uh, new changes will mean for them. So for example, if you happen to be the property owner of a multifamily dwelling that has uh, more than five residential units, and you also happen to have commercial space below, the residential tenants above, if they're currently being serviced by Giordano, can continue to be serviced by Giordano. However, the business will have to contract privately. Um, so this is going to be based on the nature of the use of the space, not just who owns the space, it's based on the source of the material. Um, so because the changes are going to be introduced on June 6th, it will be uh, considered for second reading on July 18th, um, which is the only township committee meeting in July. And the change affecting commercial businesses will be effective 60 days following adoption which puts us at September 18th. That's the point at which every business will have to send me, um, or really the township, a letter documenting um, either formally or providing a bill or an invoice or something that shows who that commercial hauler is. So everyone will have through the summer to get their ducks in a row. Um, and that's basically it. So if anyone has any questions or concerns, I can answer them. Uh, thanks, Jesse. Next, we have a uh, Tracy. Is this you and JEDA? That's me. Yep. Um, so I had the pleasure of joining an informational call that was held on May 10th um, regarding this very exciting um, free website initiative from the New Jersey Economic Development what's the Authority. Authority. Okay. Association Authority. Okay. Um, this is um, an initiative through which businesses in New Jersey can get free websites developed and e-commerce functionality. So this is really, really a great opportunity. There are 12 agencies. This is an even better part of this. There were 12 um, agencies that are authorized to be developing these websites. And one of those is New Frontier, which is um, a web development agency that actually created our website that is located in the SID. Um, so there was a nice number of businesses um, in attendance at this meeting and David Sorkin, the head of New Frontier, gave an overview of the program. It's basically for any businesses in restaurants, personal care and retail shops. Um, personal care is pretty broadly defined, hair salons, nail salons, dentists, fitness studios, et cetera. Um, and the key thing is these businesses do need to have a commercial storefront location. Um, the focus is on website design, both new websites for businesses that have never had a website or updated websites if businesses have not updated their websites in a while, including online sales and ordering. Um, so enabling e-commerce, if there's businesses that don't currently have an e-commerce function, this grant and this will enable that to be developed. And they also coordinate with a lot of different apps and plugins such as Shopify that a lot of businesses use. Um, so as David said, it, it sounds too good to be true, but it is true, um, but the money is limited. So just for everybody here, any businesses that you know that would qualify, um, are encouraged to apply um, as soon as possible. Um, and I say the nice thing is New Frontier said they're located here right in town. So if they work with local businesses, they can go into those local businesses and they could get a, you know, a, a, a direct feel for those businesses. Am I missing anything, Steve? 
No, we covered it. Okay. And any well, questions? The best way to go is there, there's nobody out there in TV land tonight. But okay. if anybody watches this on YouTube, um, you just go to you type in New Frontier Marketplace. Um, that is their new sub brand that is focused simply on this program. Um, if you Google that, it takes you to a landing page that has a version of the state application. Uh, you fill that out, it goes to the state, and then the state will uh, provide you uh, either with New Frontier or one of the other providers. Um, but it's a, uh, it's, a, it's a template for everybody in New Jersey to use. So it's New Frontier Marketplace. Thank you, Tracy. Um, or are you handling the rest of this, or is that now, Steve? No, I'm going to go okay. out. All right, Steve. Rocktoberfest. All right, terrific. So, um, as you all know, Rocktoberfest is a huge event in town. We have participated uh, since 2021. Uh, this year, the date is Saturday, September 9th, from 9 a.m. to midnight. Um, so it is it is quite a day. Um, we have been asked to participate. Um, with putting together something that Amanda actually developed, which is a, a concept called a kid's first experience. And the idea is that we have many businesses in town who are things like pediatric dentists or children's swim schools, um, kids photographers, right? So these are all um, opportunities for local residents who have children um, that are looking for these resources to meet them. So uh, we're working right now with the Rocktoberfest team on figuring out how we can create um, a specific location within Taylor Park or on Main Street where we're trying to go through logistics at the moment. But the idea is hopefully we'll have between 20 and 30 or so businesses that, that fit that parameter. Um, we are going to hopefully provide uh, a portion of the cost that those folks would pay uh, towards the Rocktoberfest um, entry fee. Um, and that would be from 12 to three. And then afterwards, um, depending on whether we do it in the park or on Main Street, uh, the idea is hopefully Main Street between um, Milburn and Taylor. So moving down a block from our traditional um, enclosure area. Um, so we've got a lot of logistics to plan with uh, the Education Foundation, with the town. Uh, we will certainly be participating. The concept will be kids first experience. It's just a matter of where and how that we're ironing out. But we're very excited uh, for that event, which is on September 9th. So block out your calendars there. Um, more immediately, uh, we are still in the season of summer sidewalk sales. Um, and this one is for Vicki Powell, um, because she always reminds me every year that you guys have to pass a resolution. Um, and so then I tell Alex, you have to pass a resolution. Um, so in, in the town, from May 5th through October 1st, all businesses are allowed to have their wares on the sidewalk during normal business hours, as long, of course, as it does not impede pedestrian traffic. Um, there's definitely some logistical and staffing challenges and security challenges that a lot of businesses are concerned with. We appreciate that. But if there's anybody that is interested in doing sidewalk sales, uh, you can do that. It's we're, We started May 5th and we are going through October 1st. So I uh, certainly encourage people to participate and be creative. Then moving on to the Main Street Pedestrian Mall. So I've got a couple of things I want to cover here. I'm going to get a bit in depth. So on May 2nd, the Township Committee introduced Ordinance 2638-23, which is for the temporary closure of Main Street between Essex and Milburn. So this is the area that we've been using um, for the last two years. The uh, dates would be June 23rd, which would be opening night. That's a Friday through September 4th. That's the Monday after Labor Day. Um, we will, uh, I, I wanna touch upon something that's, that's come up in, in public discourse, which is um, how we, how the town has gone about doing this in terms of legality. So um, the, we call it the Main Street Pedestrian Mall. That is for marketing purposes only and branding. It's not a legal term, right? Um, the statute that the town is using um, is for temporary road closures, not for the creation of a pedestrian mall, something like Division Street in Somerville, right, which is permanently closed to traffic and there's no vehicular access. Um, so I just want to make sure that, um, you know, we, we nip this in the bud that there is a, we call it the pedestrian mall for branding, but that's not the legal uh, course that the town has taken. Um, so there is a hearing on June 6th, that is the fine, that is the public hearing on this. 
Um, obviously, um, I will be there to encourage the Township Committee to pass this ordinance. Um, and I hope that uh, if anybody else wants to attend that you do so as well. Obviously, this has been a phenomenal uh, thing for economic development in this town. We won a statewide award last year for best in place making. And this year, we have a really, really great program slated. I'll get into that in a second. But um, so that is June 6th is the public hearing on that ordinance. Um, we also, uh, there'll be a, I believe, let's see here, I'm just looking at my notes, introduced on Tuesday and then June 20th, there'll be a public hearing on an update to ordinance 2639-23, sidewalk cafes. Um, so as you know, in town, um, all, all restaurants can apply for tables outside their, their spaces. Um, some of them use the pedestrian mall. Um, and so what we wanted to do was create more financial and space equity. And so Alex, myself, Christine, Gaddy, our clerk, we worked on redeveloping this ordinance uh, to be more inclusive. Um, and so it was introduced Tuesday night. Um, it changes the license fees slightly, uh, it removes an application fee that some business that everybody has to pay, um, incorporates it into the per table fee structure. Um, and then it includes specific language about the temporary street closure. So that's not just Main Street, that's any area in town um, that is closed temporarily. You can then put out tables and chairs. Um, we are now allowing through this ordinance um, let's, so we know we have five restaurants or food service places on the Main Street Pedestrian Mall, but let's say Vinny's Pizza wanted to put out two, two tables that were reserved for their customers. Under this structure, they would apply to the town, say, I want two tables that are reserved. Um, there'll be signage on them, obviously, and then a customer can go in, pick up a pizza, go sit down to the Pedestrian Mall on those two chair, on those two tables. They can also order if they want call up and just say, hey, I'm sitting in your reserved seats, please bring me a pizza. Um, so the idea is that there's a lot of restaurants, certainly, um, that have the ability to either have takeout brought to the pedestrian mall or can do delivery. So this is just another wrinkle in trying to make it more inclusive. Um, so we'll see how many more tables and chairs get set up. Um, so we're excited about that. And uh, the next steps are the clerk's office is gonna be preparing a form that restaurants will fill out. Um, that'll be reviewed by Alex McDonald, as well as myself, um, to make sure that we have space in the mall, um, because we obviously have a lot of activities going on. Um, but I think this is a really good opportunity for more businesses to get engaged, as well as recover some of the costs um, for the existing users. So um, this is something that needed to be revamped due to the success of the program. I'm happy we did it, and there'll be a public hearing on June 20th. Um, and then that gets us to, oh, and also, Jesse, if you don't mind just pulling up, um, we have some photos. We we put in some new tables and chairs in the uh, the courtyard behind Coffee Mill Roasters, and um, people started calling it the Oasis, so I've called it that. <laughs> um, so the township um, purchased these chairs and tables. We uh, went through finding out, you know, what would be the best look, um, and so we just got to, we have memory serves, there's four of them, five of them, um, plus one of the benches that we actually use for our holiday events. Yeah. Um, and so those, the, the additional benches that we have in storage are gonna be repurposed for the pedestrian mall as well. But this space has turned out really great. We're really happy with it. Um, so we do have a lot of different seating options in the downtown. Okay, is there any signage there, Steve? It's part of what she's ordering. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we're trying to public, do this. I don't know. Like yeah. Oasis public with seating. Yes, we, we also want to put little tags on the furniture to let them know who I did it. Right. Yeah. So that's it's all part of our signs we have to order for public art and yeah. seats. So what kind of capacity do you think you'll have in the pedestrian mall for these ancillary businesses? I don't know. Um, I don't. It's going to depend on what, you know, the, the larger users, Fiamma, the Standard, and Ibu uh, decide to put out. Okay. So, it, again, that's why it's going to be reviewed by myself and Alex, um, because we do need space for the games. We need right. space for uh, public seating. Right. We need space for the music. Um, we have the Open Streets program. Um, so we, we have to be a bit judicious, but we'd like to also see, you know, I think there's going to be obviously logistical challenges for some restaurants that may not be able to serve um, tables that are remote, but you know, where the opportunity is there, let's work our way through it. What, what, what was the update on the parklets? The parklets are kind of like yeah, the town is not authorizing parklets this year. Um, there was significant issues with insurance um, requirements from the county, 
And so there was only two businesses that actually used them. Um, and so at, at that point, we just decided um, it wasn't something that we were going to proceed with. So there's no option this year. Um, you, there's plenty of options to get your street seating um, and your, you know, all of that, but no options for um, parking. So the last thing I want to talk about is the anticipated schedule and the new features um, for the pedestrian mall. So we're going to put in um, new A-frame signage, the, the large black plastic signs that we use for directions and uh, pedestrian scale information. Um, they'll all have QR codes and uh, with schedules and language, but we're going to focus on live music, one for open streets, one for the Games on Main program, and then one for public dining and seating. So that should cover the four features. Um, we are going to put out some business A-frame signs. So we have some wooden A-frames that we usually have a chalk artist do. Amanda's going to restructure that a little bit. And um, we're going to, we were asked by actually the owner of the book house, if we could put together signs that we have one up at Short Hill Station. I don't know if anybody's ever seen it, but at the train station, we have a list of all the businesses in that district. And it says shopping district this way um, with an idea of trying to capture commuters. So we're going to do the same thing um, at the clock tower at Milburn and Maine at the Duncan Crosswalk and then Essex and Maine um, to try to encourage people to walk up Old Short Hills Road, walk um, you know, down towards Splurge Bakery. Um, a lot of these places, people don't realize that the commercial district continues. So those will all be pedestrian scale signage. Um, we are gonna be updating the inside facing portion of the traffic barricades. You know, they're uh, traditional sort of Jersey barriers. They're orange and white for safety. Um, so Amanda's working on the inside portion, which is not needed for uh, car safety. We're going to have eight banners, uh, four will be branded with our logo and four of a sponsor that we are actively pursuing. So that'll make it a nice backdrop for the bands. Um, we'll certainly bring that to our marketing committee uh, before we go with that. Um, I mentioned public seating. We're going to be adding one more picnic table. So there'll be three. Um, we have five benches and end tables. Um, that we have in storage. We're going to be putting those out. We have high tops in the uh, art alley. So we have three of those we're going to move over. Um, and then Amanda wanted to get kids sized picnic tables. Um, so there's going to be, you know, because for us, a real big piece of this is encouraging people to shop off the off of the mall and come into it with. So grab your ice cream, grab your Mexican food, whatever it is, and come down. So, um, you know, I think adding more public seating is crucial. Um, the game is on main. We're going to continue with our life-size chessboard to connect four board. The chalk was a huge hit last year, so we'll, we'll do that. Um, we're also going to focus on providing menus for businesses outside the pedestrian mall. So uh, we're going to have a list of restaurants by cuisine um, that will be on all the public seating areas. So when you go up there, there'll be ideally a laminated piece of paper um, attached to a bench, and it will have all the restaurants um, in the town and then there'll be a QR code that's gonna direct you to a landing page as well. Um, so people can easily navigate. So the idea again, trying to make this a more inclusive space for all the different businesses. Um, and there'll be some specifics on that that Amanda and I will go through. We're also doing the open streets program again. If you remember last year, we had chess tournaments, we had yoga, cycle bar, did a class outdoors. Um, so we're gonna start June 14th with outreach uh, to businesses. Um, hopefully we'll get some people to, to do those off hour times. Um, we'll also add that to our online schedule. And then we have 34 music acts that are already booked. So those are Friday and Saturday from 6.30 to 9.30 and Sunday from 1 to 4. Um, and so that'll be again on our dedicated web page. It'll replace the Girls Night Out page. And so people constantly go to that during the year and say, well, who, what band is playing Friday night at 6.30? Um, so the, the pedestrian mall is, is rocking and rolling. And um, I no will implore. No <laughs> What's the opening date again? June 23rd. It's a Friday night, and uh, <laughs> hopefully the weather's great. We have a, a really good uh, guitar player playing that night, and um, I will implore the township committee to pass the ordinance. Any sure. idea when Charlie Brown's is going? Sorry. Any idea when Charlie Brown's property is going to be complete? Complete. Uh, the, the owner hasn't talked to me recently, so I, I don't know. <laughs> Um, I, I wish I knew, but I don't. Uh, Steve, any thought to inviting board members to uh, introduce the bands or to have like... Uh, June 23rd, Richard Wasserman, 6.30 p.m. That was easy. <laughs> no, my dedicated colleagues. That, uh, yeah, we've done it over the... We, yeah. we did it last year. I, I think it's a nice touch, especially maybe for opening or... 
Yeah, I, I would definitely people. encourage, you know, certainly opening night, opening weekend, uh, if you as board members can be there. Um, I'll be there, Amanda. It's just a great way for us to show our face as an organization and shake hands and let people know what we're up to. So, um, and hand and, out the postcards. And hand out postcards. Get people aware of everything. Yes. <laughs> so we're, we're looking forward to it. Yeah, at one point, remember we had name tags as board members mm -hmm. to identify. So like I'm thinking the parade or these events to show up, but like show that we're Explore Milburn Board of Trustees. Yeah. So, Is everyone lost their know, name tag? I'm not looking for swag or hats or something. I took them all. You were holding them. I still have mine. I, I do have mine. Um, I mean, but honestly, I, I throw like, that out there just because no, no, they so were recognized by. We've me. been talking about it. Um, you know, t-shirts might be a good way to go. Um, if, if or collared polos, well, you know, something yeah. that people. Are holding. Yeah, something that people, you know, we can wear to events. Formal. We require college. Yes, <laughs> I thought always. So. Maybe just, we just can, an idea. How about we give everyone options? We can get a t-shirt and a collared sure. shirt. Um, or, or a hat. Yeah. Or a tank top. With our logo, yeah. once in that way, you don't have to get involved with side. I mean, I don't know. Just yeah, that's true. We can do it all. <laughs> we will get on that for the summer season. <laughs> and that concludes my remarks. Do we not have any items for action? Nothing to consider for action? No. Okay. Uh, new business, open discussion. Anybody have anything a little bit of the order before we go to public comments? Okay. Pretty public. robust. This was a robust, uh, robust program. <laughs> We're not <laughs> bored. <laughs> Content rich. And, and right. Kudos to our executive director and Amanda for all the hard work that's <laughs> making this happen. Thank you. The gross night out is soup to nuts. Okay, so we'll move on to public comment. Um, when invited to speak, please come to the lecterns. Clearly state your name and speak into the podium microphone so we can understand and report what you have to say. Um, you must limit your comment to three meet uh, to three minutes, and any attendees utilizing Zoom uh, will also have an opportunity to speak. Um, because we've had such a robust meeting, I'd like to start with those here in the meeting room. Uh, if anybody wishes to speak, please come to the podium microphone. You have three minutes. Thank you. Um, good evening. My name is Jeffrey Feld. Um, I don't know where to start. Um, as to the bare properties. No one knows the reasons for the what it is. I've ordered a transcript. Um, judge said he read uh, reasons, but he refused to attach it. And as part of court rules, he's required to set forth the findings why he didn't do it. The reason that's important, Jesse and Steve Grillo, when did I start telling the town they had to change the ordinance on solid commercial solid waste? And that you couldn't change and charge people. I think originally the town said that we were going to change it effective at the end of February. Then it got pushed that it was supposed to be effective in the um, end of this month. Now we're going to probably see September. Statutory interpretation is important. I guess I'm, sometimes I'm right about how you interpret a statute. The next takes us about the Main Street pedestrian wall. Now, talking about nomenclature. There was bait and switch that occurred on the night the introduction of that ordinance happened. There was a change ordinance on the table. The change, originally you were going to go under the pedestrian wall statute. You changed it to go under a traffic removal from there. Because under pedestrian wall, it required a traffic study. And the last, I said, month, traffic studies has become a very big issue in this town. Um, when you start talking about Annie Says last night, the township were authorized to get a special report on the traffic after the fact that they approved the stealth settlement without telling them what the terms. Um, now we're talking about Essex Street being converted. That was Tuesday's night discussion, but traffic studies. Um, we also found out through the budget process how much money is coming out of this town budget to support the Main Street pedestrian wall that was never been disclosed before about overtime for police. Um, maybe some for the DPW. And so now we're finding out maybe for additional tables, but people are sort of focusing on what's happening. I'm glad that the public will now, tonight there was more disclosure about commercial solid waste than we received on Tuesday night. And I thank Jesse for giving us more disclosure. Um, but there's still other things that are gonna be affecting businesses. You need an insurance registration. That's the best practice that has to come in. Lead inspections. Um, the new term we're hearing is community input. That's all we hear at, and we heard that last at the um, planning board, the township committee, I got 30 seconds less more, 
And we heard a phrase, urban edge last month. That is the edge, urban edge. In March of 2021, prior to these two gentlemen arrived, we heard about a main street application that we're gonna become a hip, hip urbanized uh, community. You need to listen to the community. Statutory interpretation is important because the statute that you're talking about, when you use the word pedestrian mall, that's really deceiving and fading and sweating to what really is happening in this community. Thank you. Good evening, Richard Seibert. I just wanted to say, um, Mr. Washerman, that was smart about Girls Night Out about security because there should be a lot of security because the town now is rampant with crime. Um, Shore Hills Mall, the mailman got mugged. His keys were taken in South Mountain. Why do they take the keys? So they can open up the mailbox, the blue mailboxes, steal the mail. Today, a CVS theft, a crime. So you should have security that night. Write that down. Uh, undercover, because that's going to be prime for crime, prime for crime. Anyway, you're doing good, man. Appreciate that. Thank you. I like listening to what's going on, and it's good for the town. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank, Thank you thanks. both. Sorry, Vicky, I forgot about you. Right. Jack and Shane. <laughs> right. <laughs> Vicky Powell, uh, business owner. Yeah, no, that's right. I'll save it for the girls' night. Um, I just have just a couple things. Uh, the parking lot behind my building is that lot four, I think. Um, who's responsible for cleaning, like weeds? Um, the belt, the blocks in the parking, you know, they need to be replaced. I mean, we need to put a little bit of attention to detail back there. Um, you know, when people park, it is a reflection of what, you know, they're coming into town. And when they see tons of weeds in the middle med uh, median, it's really sad. So uh, we can do work on that. Also, I hate to say this, but there's a chip in the mural. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> I hate to tell you that, Jesse. Just on the bottom left corner, there's a small chip. I, I you might want to have them. Get some white out or something. I'll send a picture to you. Um, also, and then last, I just want to thank Amanda. She has been like a rock star with Girls Night Out. I handed out posters today to around the downtown, and everyone was commenting how awesome that poster was. Oh my gosh, I love it! I love it! I love it! Everyone's very excited for it. Um, I um, so it's going to be a great event, and hope we have a lot of community support. Tell your friends. Um, it's just going to be out of the park. So um, I just want to say she's a rock star. She's working very hard. So uh, you know we're a committee, and you know we're delegating, and, and we're all working together. But we're giving her our our ideas and Amanda's making them happen. So she really is working very hard. So I just want to thank you. <laughs> thank you. Agreed. Thank you. Ever since I saw her hauling lumber <laughs> yeah. and firewood, I knew we had a gem. Uh, uh, nobody left inside the room. Anybody online wishing to speak? Do you have anybody? Okay. Good evening, Perry Urso, 514 Milburn Avenue. So I'm happy to hear that we finally got an answer about the solid waste pickup. So now we're looking at September. Um, unfortunately, I still haven't heard back from anyone regarding uh, lot 14 since their information session. I have a question about the educational events that are being held and offered to merchants. Um, what is the number of participants and also are they free? as they're advertised free. Regarding the Main Street closure, will the additional fees collected over cover their expenses? And how are you actually funding the entertainment? Or are the other districts subsidizing for their benefit? Ladies Night Out, I see tonight was, is being advertised and being held downtown. Who's funding that event? And it's no coincidence and it's rather obvious that Explore is focused on downtown and now Upper Milburn Avenue. What about the other districts? On your agenda, there's a discussion Amanda had talked about Upper Milburn Avenue welcome sign. To be honest with you, 
this is absolutely disrespectful that this board is considering to replace a historic sign on Upper Milburn Avenue. Additionally, has Explore been granted permission to remove a sign which was provided and purchased by a past Chamber of Commerce president, business owner of 70 years, now retired, and a current still property owner, Lloyd Procal. And is it also your intention for Explore to do the same thing with the sign that was purchased by Weikert Realtor? I'm sure James Weikert might have uh, some comments about that. History matters, people. And lastly, we have two candidates that ran on what they would not use taxpayers' money to fund the SID. They broke their promise. Have a nice evening. Thank you. Anything that there was a question about the, about some of the activities, uh, some of the um, programs. Yeah. Uh, so uh, Ms. Urso asked about lot 14. As I mentioned earlier in my comments, uh, the engineering work has not been completed yet. So um, I know she's been asking that at every meeting, uh, TC and Explore. The answer remains the same. We don't have uh, deliverables from the engineering department. Um, she certainly can contact them or the business administrator <laughs> if she's concerned. Certainly, when we have those results, we'll produce them. Um, in terms of the classes, we have had a variety of different classes. I think we've done seven or eight um, at this point in the year. Um, attendance varies on the topic, um, on the medium. So some of them are on Zoom, some of them are in person, some of them are in the morning, some in the afternoon. Um, they're all free to attend uh, as part of everything else that the SID provides. So I'm sure she's alluding to the theory that you pay a tax for the service. You do, um, but you also pay a tax for the roads. Uh, we don't charge you to use them on a daily basis. We don't charge you to attend the classes. So um, she's certainly welcome to participate in any of those classes. In fact, we have one coming up on Wednesday at 5.30 in this very room. She'd like to come in and participate. She's more than welcome, just like all the other 500 businesses that are involved. Thank you, Steve. Um, so announcement next meeting we have with this board is uh, Thursday, June 15th. 6.30 p.m., right? Calendars. Uh, anything else before we adjourn this? Yes, if Jackie, Richard, and Carlo could stay, we have to set a committee meeting date. That aside, thank you all. Robust meeting. <laughs> uh, so motion to adjourn. So motion. Second. Second.